Hello again, everyone. Recently, I attended All Things Open in Raleigh, North Carolina, and had a ton of fun. In fact, I have an entire video that goes over my experience there at the event, so definitely check that video out if you haven't already seen it. In today's video, what I'm going to do is play back some of the conversations that I had with the exhibitors there at the event. I had some awesome conversations and met some very amazing people, so I figured what I would do is play some of those conversations back for you guys. Also, be sure to stay tuned until the very end of the video, because that's when I'm going to play back a conversation that I had with Sam from System76. He was there at All Things Open to display some of the more recent computers that they have made available, which is pretty cool. But there might also be a prototype of something that you might not even be aware of that's even being worked on. So definitely check out that section. You don't want to miss it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And we'll start off with Major League Hacking. So I'm here with John from MLH, Major League Hacking. How you doing? I'm doing great. This conference is awesome. It's my first time. I'm really happy to be here. And how about you tell us a little bit about Major League Hacking? Yeah, so Major League Hacking is the global community for early career developers. We put on educational programs that help people bridge the gap from what you learn in the classroom, which is often theoretical or very basic, to what you actually need to be successful in the industry. Uh, that happens through programs like hackathons, workshops, conferences, as well as a 12-week immersive open source fellowship where we teach people to contribute to major projects used by millions of developers around the world. And where can people go to learn more about it? So people can go to mlh.io or fellowship.mlh.io. Companies sponsor everything we do. It's free for students, and it's an incredible way to build your talent pipeline, build your open source community, and get thousands of developers learning about your platform. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, let's check in with Jack from Alma Linux. Now, he's been on this channel before, so you've probably seen him in other videos. But this is the first time that I actually met him in person. And he was there representing Alma Linux. So let's go ahead and see what he had to say. So I'm here with Jack from Alma Linux. How you doing? Hey, Jay. How are you? Long time no see. Actually, I saw you like a few times now, but I'll just say long time no see in terms of my channel. So you're here representing Alma Linux. So for anyone in my audience who hasn't already seen Alma Linux in action yet, Maybe you could tell the audience a little bit about the project and the goal that it solves. Yes, Alma Linux is an enterprise-grade, totally free, community-owned and operated uh, operating system. Um, for those of you that are familiar with CentOS, um, we are basically continuing down the path of the classic CentOS model, which was a downstream rebuild of Red Hat. And so uh, we basically do the same thing that they used to do before they shifted to the stream model. And uh, you know, along with that, we are trying to increase community involvement and engagement amongst lots of different groups uh, and kind of bring them into the fold of our larger ecosystem as well. Awesome, so where can people go to get started with contributing or just downloading Alma Linux? Uh, you can check out almalinux.org. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there, including links to download, uh, different resources, documentation. Uh, we also have chat.almalinux.org, which is our community chat, which is bridged throughout Matrix, IRC, whatever your, uh, your, your choice is these days. Um, so you can reach us there. We also have uh, the Alma Linux forums. And all of this stuff is, of course, and, and I should mention uh, Reddit too, um, but all of this stuff is all on the website, so I would say check it out there, and then uh, you can jump from there to anywhere that you please. Awesome, well thank you so much for spending time with me and my audience today. Thank you, Jay, for uh, being here and for being a supporter of Alma Linux. You're welcome. Thanks. Next up, let's check in with Kelly from Chick Tech. And what Chick Tech aims to do is bring technology and STEM opportunities to women and marginalized genders that may not have opportunities otherwise. And judging by the analytics from this channel, which are 95% male, I would say that she's doing a really great service by making these opportunities available for women because we need more women in technology for sure. 
Hi, I'm here with Kelly from Chick Tech. How are you doing? Hey everyone, I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing amazing. I'm enjoying the conference. It's my very first time here and I'm loving it. Yeah, we love it. I think this is our fourth time here. You're so lucky. Yeah. But you know, better late than never, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Chick Tech and the goal that it solves. Yeah, and so Chick Tech is a nationwide organization. It was formed in Portland, Oregon in 2012 by a woman who was a little tired of being the only woman in the room in tech. So she formed it in an attempt to help get more diversity into tech. Um, and what Chick Tech does is it offers workshops, free workshops in STEM for 8th through 12th graders and is targeted at students who identify as girls, non-binary, trans in either direction, questioning. And we go out to the high schools uh, in the area and let the career development counselors and math and STEM teachers know about it and then they nominate students. Students can also self-nominate, and then we have in-person workshops in the Raleigh-Durham area. So I'm the Raleigh-Durham chapter director, uh, and we do in-person workshops. Then uh, our headquarters actually runs virtual workshops, two a month, and we run the program from October until June. So it's a great opportunity for students to get exposed to all things STEM, right? Mm -hmm. We have students who go to these workshops and they end up being in tech or STEM careers. We have other students who don't, but you know what, they tried it. They tried it, it wasn't their thing. Um, and you know, we need volunteers. The, the entire organization is volunteer run, so we need volunteers for everything. And it's not just tech or STEM people. We need volunteers for marketing. We need volunteers to help us make phone calls. We need volunteers to help us manage our volunteer base, et cetera. It's like literally anything you can think of, Chick Tech can probably use. Uh, and the Raleigh-Durham chapter has been here for six years. We're actually one of the most active. Anybody in the Raleigh-Durham area want to volunteer? You have students you want to nominate? Please do. It's a really great organization. And where can people go to find out more? ChickTech.org. You can volunteer there. You can register students there. It's just an amazing, uh, I, I said, I've been at it for six years, and it's been an amazing journey. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. It. I'm really happy that organizations like ChickTech exist. They're doing a major service for the community, and I really appreciate that. So let's check out another booth there at the event, this time the GitLab booth. So I'm here with Chris from GitLab. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. So tell my audience a little bit about GitLab. So GitLab is essentially a DevSecOps platform. It aims to be kind of like a one platform where we pull in all of your data across your entire DevSecOps lifecycle so that your developers and your engineers can look at things and get information quicker, kind of resulting in a, a better, more favorable outcome for your releases. So your releases, with that type of uh, observability and that understanding, your releases become more stable, more reliable, more frequent, and your team's velocity gets increased substantially. And where can people go to find out more about it? Our webpage is great, gitlab.com. We've got a 100% open handbook. Um, you can read everything you need to know about GitLab there. Awesome, well thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I've been using GitLab for a very long time now, and I really like it, it's really cool. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys would like to see content around GitLab and you never know, I might just give it to you. Now continuing right along, let's check in with the Mattermost booth. Hi there, I am here with Jordana and Andrew from Mattermost. How are you guys doing? Good, We're great. thank you. Awesome. So tell me a little bit, or tell my audience a little bit about Mattermost and the goal that it tries to solve. Sure. So Mattermost is a secure, open source community communications suite. So basically we do chat and we do it very well. It's open source, so we have a lot of the integrations with a lot of the tools you're already using. But besides that, we have project management built in. So we have Kanban boards built into the product and this really cool thing called playbooks. So basically you can create little run books for any type of repeatable process you have, which, does, which kind of like helps you with your workflow and it has automation built in. So let's say you get an, an error reported. You can have playbooks listen for that, create a channel, add all the, the, the relevant people in there, and maybe even do some of the integrations like creating a JIRA ticket. So it's, it's a really, really great tool that helps kind of like um, address some of the lift for sometimes when these things happen to kind of like, so you can get there 
and extinguishing extinguishing the fires, the dumpster fires, a little bit easier. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. And you can self-host. You can host with us in the cloud, and because it's open source, you can fully extend it and customize it. Spin it on its head and make it do whatever your team needs to do, because Mattermost understands that the needs of every developer team is different, and we provide a platform and a collaboration tool that puts them all in one spot. That sounds amazing, and where can um, someone in the audience go to find out more about Mattermost? Mattermost.com. We also have a community server, so you can just pop in, we're both there, and, and come say hi and, have, and talk with us. Yeah, we're a very friendly and welcoming community. If you're interested in joining open source or working on your first PR, doesn't even have to be code related. Mattermost has tons of resources, and Jordan and I are very invested in making sure that the community members who come in through our doors are welcomed and have great projects to work on. Awesome, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem, Thanks. thank you. Now Mattermost is really awesome, and I definitely recommend that you check it out. And just like I mentioned with GitLab, if you guys want to see some Mattermost content on this channel, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Next, let's check in with Amanda from OpenUK. Hi there, I'm here with Amanda from OpenUK. How are you doing? Really well, thank you. We've had a fantastic time here at All Things Open. It's a great conference. I'm having a lot of fun, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. So tell us a little bit about OpenUK and uh, what goals it, it actually solves. So we're an industry organization in the UK. We're geographically focused on the UK, but our purpose is UK leadership and global collaboration and open technology. And that's open source software, hardware, and data, the three opens as we call it. We work on community, legal and policy and learning. And by bringing together the leadership across the UK into a community, we create a voice, a cohesive voice for the UK. And that allows us to have influence on laws and policies. We're currently setting up a, a group within the UK Parliament called an all-party parliamentary group to help politicians understand open source. So really exciting stuff happening. And then the third thing we do is around skills and learning. We've done a, a couple of kids camps and you'll probably see behind me here, there is a pop-up for a book that I've recently edited. We did a panel launching it yesterday. Uh, it has 26 authors and it is probably going to be the sort of seminal text on open source in terms of law, policy and practice. Awesome. So where can uh, everyone go to learn more? So openuk.uk, openuk underscore UK on Twitter. We're pretty strong on Twitter, so you'll find us there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks appreciate very it. much. Take care. Thank you, Amanda. I really appreciate it. Last but certainly not least, let's check in with Sam from System76. Like I mentioned during the intro, he was there with some of their more recent models of computers and their booth was very popular and for good reason. So let's see what Sam had to say about their recent models and we might even throw in a prototype of something that you might not even be aware is being worked on. All right, so I'm here with Sam from System76. How you doing? Doing great, Jay, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. Now normally in this video, I'm just um, having people pitch their projects or their product. I think people very well know what System76 is on my channel, but right here we have some really cool stuff and I was hoping you could show us around your booth. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think we can start right here first. It's the uh, love child of our engineering team. Oh, wow. So we've just created a very cool, interactive, uh, fully open source chess set. Uh, 3D printing files are available online, and so is the chessboard itself. Uh, but wow. we are, we've are we given away one so far and given away another later this afternoon. Uh, and they're uh, all based off of our amazing robots that uh, our marketing and design team have come up with. Very awesome. That is really cool. All right, so what else do you have? Uh, we've also got the all-new uh, Oryx Pro with the 4K OLED display and DDR5. Uh, so it's uh, an amazing display with a fantastic uh, overall uh, GPU and hardware. Awesome. Uh, along with the Oryx Pro, we have the Darter Pro, which is our 15-inch uh, Intel U-Class CPUs uh, with 12th gen up to 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, also in the background, we've got our launch lights, which are available for sale at ATO. First in-person opportunity to buy those as well. Uh, and All as right. we go down. We might have a little scoop in here too. We might have something a little 
I don't know, can we show this? Are we allowed to show what I'm about to think about showing? Ah, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. So it's our, people already know about it. So as you know, we have launch, we have launch light. Launch heavy is coming soon. This is the first prototype off the line. And all things open was the first place we got to show it to people in person. Uh, so it is all the great things of launch, which means that you've got the USB 3.2 Gen 2 speed hub, as well as the missing number pad, which I know is a huge thing for me in general, since I spend too much time in spreadsheets. Awesome. Yeah, that is really, really cool. And then here... And then we've got the Lemur Pro over here, which is our amazing uh, portable laptop up to 14 hours of battery life, uh, USB-C Thunderbolt 4, um, charging through USB-C as well. Uh, and can get, I think I said 14 hours of battery life already, but it's worth mentioning again. So immediately I'm thinking eGPU because Thunderbolt 4 charging over USB-C, so a Thunderbolt GPU dock would be probably something I would love to try out on that computer for sure. I think it's worth a try. Awesome. Then we have something really, really cool. And then next to it, we have the custom accent for all things open, which is the amazing astronaut celebrating the 10 years of all things open event. Um, it's the first custom accent that we've done, and we have given away one of two units for this through the all things open gamification. Um, this one is rocking a i9-13900K, and an NVIDIA RTX 4000 Quadro GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a wow. one terabyte NVMe. So wow. basically, it's going to be a video editor or content creator's dream machine. Are you are you hinting to something here? <laughs> I'm just saying you might want to buy that, Jay. Might want to. I, I have a Pilio, but I can always use another one. You can just saying. use a second. <laughs> always use a second. All right. Anything else you want the audience to know? Um, it's been a blast here at All Things Open. They put on a great event. If you're in the Raleigh area next year, I highly recommend stepping by and checking out the event. Awesome, thank you very much. All Things Open had a ton of booths there at the event, so it's impossible for me to get footage from each and every one of them, but hopefully you enjoyed the conversations that I showed you in this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know that you liked this video, and that also helps me out as well. And also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, I have some awesome content coming very soon that I can't wait for you to see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.